Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. I say I'm gonna take some time off, y'all. All the cashiers, they was like, somebody stole their truck. It was like, you could hear it all throughout the store. This rock's coming to you today with the review for Love and Marriage Detroit. Love and Marriage Huntsville. Our book four, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's get to it, shall we? guys before we get started as you see i am dressed down today because i am at home today that's right you guys i'm working from home today this is thursday that i do this video you know that i record the video usually i do it on my lunch break i'm still on my lunch break but um yeah you guys got home from work yesterday and my water was out they had a main break in my neighborhood and we didn't have water all night Okay, and I was like, and, and you know, TMI, TMI. It's that time of the month. I can't go to work. I cannot go to work. When you know, when we having them kind of things going on. So I had to, I had to bow out wow gracefully today. Um, the water's back on now, but I was just like, I'm not going in. And you know, I will, um, I'll work from home if you guys need me. I have my laptop and stuff and that's just going to have to be that, y'all. But yeah, last it's so funny how you don't miss something until it's gone. Like, that is such a true statement because all, I mean, I'm never thirsty. I don't even really like water like that, like that. You know, I just started really trying to make sure I drink water and things. But all, I mean, you would have thought me and Mr. was in here just dying of, like, thirst. He, he ended up going, now, Mr. don't never go to the store Anytime after the evening time, the sun go down, Mr. ain't going outside, child. And he even went <laughs> went to the gas station at like almost 11 o'clock last night. Like, I got to get some water. Now, he actually drinks a lot of water, but I don't. But anyway, yeah, that water was out all day yesterday, honey. On that neighborhood app, folks was putting up messages. They was pissed, okay? Little kids, like, my son stink. He needs to take a bath. I was like, fuck, I stink. I want to take a damn bath, you know? Anyway, it's back up. But yeah, Atlanta, even though I don't live in the city of Atlanta, we get our water from city of Atlanta. So city of Atlanta has been having all these issues with water main breaks. And I just don't understand. I, I just don't understand. Like, what, what? why is it? Anyway, it's all done. It's all good. Bitch, smell good now. <laughs> anyway, you guys, <clears throat> let me get to the first story. Actually, the first story is pretty sad. Um, I know you guys saw all over social media yesterday um, about the shooting here in Georgia. Now, the shooting was at um, Appalachie High School, which is in Winder, Georgia. I don't know where that is. They said that it's like almost an hour outside of Atlanta. Atlanta is still very big. Okay, so that I don't even know if that's north of Atlanta, south of Atlanta. I don't know where that is. Whatever it is, 14-year-old um, Colt Gray who I'm assuming 14 years old is what, ninth grade? You know, anyway, ninth grade, um, he must have been ninth grader. I'm assuming he went to that school. I, I don't know that for a fact, but he walked onto the campus yesterday um, and around 10, somewhere around 10, 10.30 in the morning, um, just started open firing, okay? They said he was just randomly walking around shooting. He didn't seem to have anybody in mind. It wasn't a targeted um, shooting. He literally was walking around and just shooting people. Um, and he ended up shooting uh, four people dead, okay? Two, two kids, two students, and two teachers. The two students' names were Mason uh, Shermahorn, excuse me if I'm saying their names wrong, but uh, Mason Shermahorn, uh, Chris, Christian Angulo, and then the teachers were Christina Irami and Richard Aspen, Aspenwall, okay? Those were the four that were shot dead. Um, and then they said that there were, at first they were saying that it was up to 30 people that were injured. Um, just, just now before I came out here to do this video, they said that it was nine people that were injured. I'm assuming that could be either being shot, grazed by bullets, or just in the whole melee of trying to get away from him. Um, but yeah, you guys, they ended up catching him. The, the the police, they say that the police came and they confronted him and that he actually surrendered without any issues. 
but um what the fuck like 14 like why is it that kids have to worry about getting shot at school we trying to get an education these gun control laws like it's just it don't make no damn sense and the fact that he was able to shoot so many people i know he didn't just have a revolver okay we know that he probably had i don't think that they have released like a lot of the information mostly because he's a minor but um, <clears throat> even though, you know, when, when you have done crime, 17 years old, um, can be tried as an adult if it's a serious crime, 13 year old, um, people can be tried as an adult if it's a violent crime. So he's going to be tried as an adult in this. He's killed four people, but I still feel like they may be protecting some parts of the story, you know, as it slowly, you know, as the investigation goes on, we'll probably find out more, but they're saying that, yeah, he just was on there and just shooting randomly. Uh, they caught him, like I said, they questioning him and his parents. Apparently he was a part of a, he threatened to shoot up the school last year. Um, and someone reported it, I guess he was on a gaming site and he must have mentioned that that's what he was going to do. So somebody reported it to the authorities and they ended up in interviewing the, the boy, Cole Gray, and his father last year around May. Um, and they determined that it was uns um, unsubstantiated, just some talk that it wasn't anything that they were worried that he was gonna follow through. Well, fast forward to a year and something later, he's done exactly what he said he was going to do which was go and shoot up the school. Very, very sad. I was watching on the news, they were interviewing some of the kids there um, and they did talk to this one little black kid. I think the school for the most part looks like, it looks like it was like in a more of a predominantly white school, but they did have one of the kids, I think looked like he was at least mixed, but um, not that that matters you guys, but I just was trying to let you know, you know, who might have been involved. Anyway, they did interview, just happened to be a young black boy, and he was just talking about how the shooting happened, and he was trying to get away. He saw one of his friends, I'm assuming the one that ended up dying, he said he was bleeding just really bad, couldn't even help him, but there was another friend that had got grazed by a bullet that he was trying to help, and he was just thanking God that, um, you know, he was like, God help, held me, you know, and he, he covered me, because otherwise... There's no no reason why this young man might not have been shot and killed as well, you know. They showed the kids as the police came in, you know, they had escorted them out onto the football field and there was actually a big circle of kids that were in prayer, um, which was actually pretty touching to see, you know, because you think sometimes with kids that age is just, you know, not tapped in. But when it comes to something like this, you know, they, they knew who they needed to lean on. So that was actually, you know, nice to see. But just it just in general, you guys, so um, upsetting that kids have to worry about this and teachers. You guys know my son is a teacher and I worry about him all the time. You know, I don't want him to ever be caught up in a situation like this. And honestly, you just cannot be sure that something like this won't affect, you know, even our own loved ones. So it's it's just really, really upsetting, really, really upsetting um, that this continues to happen. Um, like I said, we're going to hear more about the kid. I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a lot of sympathy or maybe a lot of um, he was, um, you know... <laughs> You know how it goes when it, but the, but the bottom line is this young man killed four people, injured nine more, and terrorized an entire school of people, and he needs to pay for that. Okay, I am one hundred percent an eye for an eye kind of person, and um, I just it's just really honestly too bad. And then you know they still need to do something about gun control laws it just kills me how people can be so gung-ho about their gun rights but then still be so upset about you know situations like this um when you know your support of these semi semi-automatic type of weapons is part of the re part of the problem part of the reason i mean we are i don't have to keep on going through this because i've told we've talked about this till we are fucking blue in the face and it continues to happen. Um, like our vice president said when she was out campaigning yesterday, just, just this does not have to happen. And it doesn't make sense, it's senseless. 
but we know a lot of the reasons why it's it's too available people it's too easy for people to get to um these weapons and it's just very very upsetting so i know many of you guys um have young kids that are in school um and this i'm sure this ain't set your nerves off um, you know, in the right direction, just knowing that, you know, especially you guys like Keandra who have like a new baby that's in school, I mean, a new kid going to kindergarten, first grade, you know, and you have to worry about those things. I mean, the best you can do is you pray over your kids and you hope that you are sending them away um, to um, be safe in these other people's care until you can get back there at two o'clock or whenever school gets out. And, you know, that I mean, that's all you can do. Um, and so I know that it's, it's just nerve wracking for everybody to have to worry about these kind of things as they continue to happen. They say it's a, it's a mass shooting every day, but it doesn't just happen at schools. It happens everywhere, but you know, just the added thing of knowing that our kids are in danger, like this is just very worrisome. So I understand. And, you know, like I said, prayers up for everybody out there. Like I said, pray up your kids. And then try to get some sort of peace of mind that your child is going to make it home to you safely that evening. That's all you can do. Anyway, we'll see what happens with um, Colt Gray. Um, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about this case. And um, I will update you guys when we do know more. Okay. Rest in peace to the four who died. Mason, Christian, Christina, and Richard. All right, you guys. And I guess I can throw in here since, you know, whenever politics is just... Oh, um, let's just talk about this reporter that was given Kamala, well, given the White House press secretary, um, grief about Kamala Harris out on the campaign trail and her adopting a country accent. Uh, <laughs> it just made me laugh at the fact that I guess white people don't realize that we as black people are hard, have to code switch all the damn time. You know, we go from I mean, I don't sound the same when I'm talking to my co-workers or my superiors or when I'm in a meeting with, you know, contractors and project managers. And when I have things that I need to do, I, I don't sound like this, honey. That, that voice is really tight. It's very much corporate. Okay, there's no slang, there's no relaxed tongue, there's none of that. When I get around my peoples, when I'm with y'all, you know, then it's different. And I don't know why people have a problem with that when Kamala Harris, I mean, she wasn't even really talking country. She just was not as clipped and as, um, she, it was a relaxed type of, 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 of verbiage, you know? And I just was like, what is the fucking problem? All right. And I was so glad that the, that the, um, press secretary shut him down, but it's just like, People amaze me. They're trying to find whatever they can to make it seem like Kamala Harris is not authentic in the way that she is. And, um, but as a black person, I was just like, yeah, I mean, now we do that all the time, all the time, honey. If I broke this voice out on the people now, you know, sometimes when I get mad enough, <laughs> which is not often, but there's been a time or two when I've been upset at work. And I could feel myself about to, you know, it was about to go into that relaxed type of, <laughs> relaxed type of talk. But for the most part, it, that's a natural thing. And I didn't have any problem with it. But, you know, they tried to say the same thing when she was talking to Taraji P. Henson at the BET Awards. Because even Mr. was just like, why was she sounding like that? I was just like, she, you know, they wouldn't. I said, first of all, the, the way it was written, you could tell that they were trying to throw in a lot of song names. Because they even said that they ain't like us. And, you know, they were saying things that were supposed to be a like the music the words from from songs they were saying in that conversation you know i got it but a lot of people didn't so people were like why is she talking like that and then i was just like oh god you guys please and i'm sure when she's around her people okay her peoples you know that the, the talk is probably a little different as well so y'all give her a break and um, I'm going to need the damn reporter to have something else of some damn substance to talk about. Because what the fuck? You guys worried about whether or not she got a country. And it wasn't even a country accent. Yeah. Also, you guys, we can talk about, remember I told you last week that the Republicans are now starting to speak out. Like, it's about, it's getting down to the wire now. We only got some weeks left um, before election day. And folks are confirming their support 
of Kamala Harris. Now, I didn't speak about the Kennedys last week when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. pulled out of the um, race and endorsed Trump, how the whole fucking family was so irritated with him that they all put out a statement and honey, they all signed their own fucking name to it. All right, that let you know, bitch, we ain't just saying the Kennedys as a whole. We mean it business. We don't fuck with him like that. He has been a disappointment to this family for a long ass time. And the fact that he didn't d decided to support Trump, that is not on them. Okay, and they then just in case anybody got that shit confused, they put each one of their damn names on there. So um, we had that last week. This week we find out that um, the McLean family or someone from the McLean family did who was it? Was it the wife or was it one of the son? The son? Anyway, somebody from the McLean family endorsed them and so did Liz Cheney. You guys know who Liz Cheney is. Liz Cheney ain't seen if it's a uh, wife's happened a long ass time. All right. So it wasn't surprising to me that she did do it, but it was surprising that she, no, you know what? It wasn't surprising to me because Liz Cheney is a Republican who um, she, now she is for her party. However, she is still going to go by the book. Like she don't like that shit that YSAP was doing. She feels like he changed the Republican party to something else. Okay. And now you got like the extreme far right, which really are more like MAGA people as opposed to like Republicans. All right. I heard a, a, a pretty interesting saying. They said that Republicans fall in line and, re, and Democrats fall in love. I had never heard that before. But I was looking at some reporter and they said that. And I said, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, that's about right. Because the Democrats appeal to the caring side of people. And I think that the Republicans all just, they are strong party supporters and they vote Republican really no matter what. But so that's why it was actually interesting to see that Liz Cheney did, um, did, um, support and endorse Kamala Harris. And it's going to be more people. It's going to be more people as we get closer because YSAP just does not need to end his ass up back in there. I think that is it for the politics. No, I let me, one more thing. Malik Obama. Now you guys know that last name, our forever president and first lady are um, the Obamas. Well, it seems that Barack has a half-brother by the name of Malik Obama who has decided that he is not supporting Kamala Harris um, because she runs on her campaign on abortion rights and, and he has now decided to support and endorse YSAP. First of all, uh, who the fuck are you? Why do we even care? We ain't never even heard of you. I didn't even know about this man. I knew that Barack had other siblings from his father's side, but you know, so it was just sort of like who the, why we, you know, the fact that he's using this name to try to have some sort of platform when we don't give a fuck, nigga, you was about the same as anybody else walking down the street deciding to wear a MAGA hat and um, say that they voting for YSAP too. Your, your, your endorsement carries no weight. Okay, and as a matter of fact, if I was part of these blogs and was one of the ones that was making the decision, I wouldn't even have put his ass on the blog because who the fuck cares? Who cares? Okay, don't nobody care about me endorsing nobody either, you know. I ain't nobody but somebody that gets on here every week for the last 13 years and talks to the camera. <laughs> you know, it's just sort of like, what? Oh, child. Anyway, it kills me that men feel so strongly about abortion rights. Like, it kills me. It has nothing, to, well, it does have to do with them. I'll take that back. You know, this, you, got, you don't get pregnant by yourself. So I get that, right? But... Ultimately, until men can have a fucking baby to damn selves, and they need to not worry the fuck about abortion rights, is, is my feeling about it. Okay? I'm irritated. You guys, I didn't glue this wig down because I just threw the shit on, and I actually have this part list pulled back because these two pieces be in my face the whole time, and... Mm, I just had some cup of noodles, y'all. And, and, um... You know, the pieces be falling in my face and the whole video, I'm moving my hair around and shit. So I was like, let me pull that back so y'all can see my face. But don't say nothing if you can see the shit lifting right there. It's just, it is what it is, y'all. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for politics. Let's move on to the next story. 
All right, you guys. Now you already know we got we got the serious subjects out of the way, I believe. And now let's talk about that goddamn Tamar Braxton. You guys, listen, I, I can't keep talking about her and saying things about her and all that without really genuinely saying, and I mean this with no humor, I'm not trying to be shady or nothing, something is wrong with Tamar. You know, people don't think that just because they're celebrities, people believe that celebrities don't have problems. People uh, believe that celebrities don't have mental health issues. People believe that you know, celebrities have everything perfect and figured out. And clearly, you can look at Tamar and say that this girl not only don't have it figured out, but she don't know what the fuck, okay? And it is not only tiring and embarrassing to see that she behaves like somebody that is just coming out of third period and about to walk into her chemistry class. She behaves as a high school child who has just been scorned by her football player boyfriend and does not know how to handle it other than speaking out when nobody cares, nobody asked about it. You know, the fact that she turns around and always ends up on internet, it's either about how much she love her man or how her man done did her wrong. So this time, the man done did her wrong again. Now I'm talking about that same fucking man that she been messing with ever since she was on that, that show that she was on with Evelyn and Nivea probably was the worst thing to happen, child. You don't hear Holly Robinson, Pete, and, and her husband talk about that shit at all. And that was their, they were the ones who produced that show. But, and I don't even know nothing about the show. I didn't even know what turned out for Nivea or anything. But Tamar and this man, this white man by the name of J.R. Robinson, okay, um, that she hooked up with, they got engaged from the show. I was just like, girl, it was just a reality show. This shit wasn't for real, for real. This was for play play. This meant that you got on there and you act like you was in love like they do every season on The Bachelor and then you go on about your damn business. But honey, no, Tamar took that shit seriously. And she, I guess, fell in love with this man. Now, we didn't see them go back and fucking forth, back and fucking forth, going back together, breaking up. I mean, we done seen her falling out with Candy, him having to get involved with that shit. We done seen her um, getting into arguments with different people, Tommy, okay? The Tommy situation should have been the, 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 the fucking straw that broke the camel's back and she should have been left that man alone because when they broke up and he went on and fucked Tommy, and Tommy told us that that man was all up in between her cooch and booty hole and all that. I mean, Tommy is the one who embarrassed you. And then you went back to him and then you tried to argue with her when she don't have no loyalty to you. She ain't engaged to you. We already know how Tommy is and you decided to come up here and be mad at her for a man who made you look stupid stupid on the internet and went and fucked with Tommy. Tommy, they had the basketball game together. They didn't win, got a room at the Ritz Carlton. I mean, why do, why do we know all this? And yet and still, you still ended up back with him. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the, with the noodle situation, y'all, but Tamar has made an ass of herself for this man plenty of times. But you know what? We was like, listen, if you like it, we love it. Okay, you're going to go on and be with him, then be with him. But the problem is, she with him one day, she not with him the next day. And we all got to hear about it. Girl, we don't give a fuck. Every two to three business days, you decide that you're not together with him. He pissed you off about something. And then you turn around and be like, girl, I love my man. This my man. He, he good to me. You know, I'm happy and all this. Girl, we ain't got time. I'm so tired, okay? The latest problem that she's had, because they off right now, okay? And depending on who you ask, because he has some shit to say. We're going to talk to him in a minute, too. But let's just talk about Tamar, because Tamar is supposed to be our sister, okay? Sister from another mister <laughs> that we got to love from very, very far distance. But I don't even know if I can say that I even love Tamar from a distance. Like, I don't even really like Tamar anymore because she is just... <sighs> anyway, Tamar got on to um, um, the internet yesterday and put up a video talking about how, 
you know, her and JR are not together, but they supposed to be friends and everything. And, you know, she got a notification on her phone that like $1,100 was charged to her her um, credit card. And so she called and come to find out that JR got a room at the Four Seasons in New Orleans with him and somebody named Miss J. Okay. And I don't know what you want me to do with this. I said, bitch, we don't know what you want us to do with that. What the fuck that got to do with us? Why do we care? Why are you on a video telling us about this shit when you the one that got the problem with this man? Why are you still going back and forth with him? We don't even understand. Why this nigga got access to your credit card? Y'all not supposed to be together no more. Like, what is happening here, right? So she's all, you know, it's the point. You know, it ain't really nothing. You know, it's just $1,100, whatever, you know. But it's the point because I thought she was different. Why you thought he was different? This nigga that embarrassed you a hundred fucking times and you still trying to sit up here and tell us. <sighs> you guys, Tamar is not going to get that. Tamar be getting my dander up like almost like she my child or something. I just be like, girl, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Do you like to look stupid? And you know, we almost probably need to apologize to all these former men that we have known her to be with in public because it, it, it it's all on Tamar, okay? We were feeling bad for her with that last break with that David guy or whatever his name was and she didn't end up in the, in, the, in the mental institution and had to get herself together and we thought when she came out she was going to be okay and then just for her to turn around and end up in the same kind of shit all over again. This one might even be worse. Because the last guy didn't seem like he was all that bad. It was just shit was getting bad. But it didn't stay. It wasn't bad from the beginning. And this shit with JR been bad from the beginning. Why am I talking about this shit so long? God? Anyway, yeah, Tamar. I'm going to need Tamar to get some help. She needs professional help. She needs to be admitted somewhere. She needs to get her ass off social media. Somebody needs to take her phone from her. This, I don't know who she got around her. Half of the family don't even fuck with each other. They don't like each other, okay? And so Tamar just be out there saying and doing whatever she wants. Just what she just a couple of weeks ago talking about, you know, that's her man. They so, you know, and they just be uh, laughing. They just be joking around and stuff. And, you know, th when she said that something else had happened, child, please. And just recently, didn't she just celebrate his birthday and not do all of this stuff for her? So I was just like, Tamar, really, honestly. I feel bad for saying all that. It seems harsh, but it's just like, what else do she want us to feel about this? You know? And then while we talking about, let's talk about JR's ass. Because he one of them niggas that will gaslight you. And he is one of them ones that taking advantage of an, a clearly a mentally ill girl. All right? Why are you trying to be friends with somebody that you know still has feelings for you, that still loves you, and don't know how to place them kind of feelings for you anywhere else? When you have a person that acts like that, you know, towards you, you don't need to try to maintain any type of friendship. I don't give a fuck if they do love your kids and all that. You should be the one to be like, no, we can't do this because you cannot distinguish between a friendship and a relationship. And he is one of those ones that knows that he he can take advantage of that. You get to come up because you know she cares about you. So that means that bitch ain't never in her fucking right mind when it comes to you. So you can take advantage of that and you can end up with her fucking credit card. He come on the damn, he come making a video saying, you know, I cannot continue to sit back and get talked about when I haven't done anything. We're trying to figure out how to be friends. Why are you trying to be friends with this girl? Obviously she cares about you differently than a friend would care. So you the one that needs to leave her to fuck along. I don't give care, care how much she call you crying. And, oh, I'm sorry, please let us be friends and all that. You need to be the one to be like, no, but he not doing that because he's still getting shit out of her. She just did all that shit for him for his birthday a few weeks ago. We saw that. I bet you he ain't had a problem with her then, okay? But now all of a sudden, I can't continue to sit up here and be talking. Man, please. A fucking mess. You are a joke. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself for dealing with a woman who clearly ain't in her fucking right mind. And you still doing all this. Now, you didn't have this credit card. I don't know if, it, you know, it's, it's mighty convenient that a person, two people end up together and they both have credit cards that have the last same three numbers. 
JR, if you don't get the fuck away from <laughs> this shit. But let's say, let's just say, maybe that is what happened. You made the mistake or whatever. He said he paid the money and all that and all that. From that point on, you needed to have severed all ties with Tamar. Okay? Your ass is in the in the, on the internet and in social media every other week because you continue to do stuff with that girl. You allowing her to buy you gifts. Yeah, all that's all good. But then the minute when she get, you know, I just was like, oh God. I mean, it's classic. We have seen this kind of shit happen before. Anybody who's lived in and been in relationships have seen this kind of shit before. But still, I'm just like, I can't, I cannot, you know. They both need to go some goddamn where. All right. And then Tamar, I feel like Tamar put 20 on 10 because she was like, when she talked to the hotel, they was like, oh, he bought, he got a room for him and Miss J. Hotels don't even tell you who the guests are. All right. They might've said he, um, put, he, <clears throat> excuse me, he got a room on that credit card for him and maybe a guest. They may say that, but they ain't giving out no names. So what that tells me is Tamar must have went on to his damn page. He probably memorizes all the folks that he followed. Tried to figure out who was the newest hoe that he had followed on there. And tried to put two and two together and came up with six. And said this woman's name. She then posted the girl's pictures and everything. All right. He claims that he just met her, just followed her, don't even know that girl. And now it might be some... Um, it might be a lawsuit because this is defamation and all that. I don't know what any of that is. All I know is he ought to be ashamed of himself for dealing with a girl who clearly is out of her mind and, and the marbles is loose and scrambled all around and you still continuing to take advantage. And you both wrong. You both wrong. But he a special kind of wrong too. Okay? I'm sick of it. I'm goddamn sick of it. Y'all, I don't even be talking, doing all this. Because I be trying to support my ladies out there. Because I know how it is. I done been took advantage of by a nigga before in the past when I was young and didn't have no damn sense. But at some point, you got to learn. You got to know. And you cannot allow yourself to keep looking like this. That's why I'm telling you that girl, she is, there is a mental health issue there. For sure. And she needs help, y'all. I don't know where she gonna get it from. Because like I said, that family don't like each other. But we go, I'll talk about the family a little later. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm over it, y'all. I'm over it. Mm, 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 mm. You know what? Let's talk about the family since we own it. I ain't watched Braxton Family Values since the show rebooted. I actually haven't watched the show in a long time. I think maybe the third season was the last time that I really watched the show. And after that, I was just done. So I don't really know a lot about the show. But I do remember a lot of things that happened those first few seasons. One, I can remember that none of the sisters never really liked any of the husbands. They used to really like Vince, but then when all that shit came out and supposedly Vince was beating Tamar and all of that, then that's when they all kind of turned on Vince, but not really. They, they sort of still kind of liked Vince, but remember the mom had said that Vince was beating her up and um, beating up Tamar, and I was just sort of like, now how you was the mama, and you knew that was happening, but y'all was acting like y'all loved a man of death, like it was confusing. But they ain't never, they ain't really like Ta um, Tony's husband. They didn't like his husband Gabe, not this new one that she got. They did not like Tamar's, I mean, uh, Tawanda's husband. And, you know, Vince was sometimes yes, sometimes no. They and, and then, of course, Tracy's husband, they was going back and forth with back in the day, too. Well, now, apparently, since Tracy has passed, and, you know, a lot of people had their eyebrow raised when they brought the show back because nobody wanted to do the show when Tracy was alive, and she was the one that wanted to do the show. Remember, she even had some other side show that she was doing, um, and it was just sort of like, oh, Tracy, what you trying to do? Was it with... Um, who was it with? T.S. Madison? No, it wasn't T.S. Madison. Who was it? She Remember she had like a show with a comedian and somebody else and all. she wanted to be on TV. She was trying to bring the family together. They wouldn't do it. So she was trying something else. But now that Tracy is no longer here and you know, now they're honoring her memory by putting the show back out. But we even seen Tamar fall apart about that show recently and saying how much she can't stand him. And we ain't gonna never forget that T um, T T Tony said that she don't like her, her family. And if she didn't have to deal with them, then she wouldn't. Like if she knew them and they was just some homegirls, she wouldn't fuck with them because she don't like them. So there's that. But anyway, when Tracy passed, apparently, remember they fell out with Tracy's husband. 
Tracy had told the family that she did not want a funeral. She didn't want people to be sad at her funeral. She didn't want people to remember her that way, that she just, uh, um, you know, wanted to just have, she just wanted to die in peace and let everybody remember her the way that they remembered her before she was ill. Well, the husband went against her wishes and had a funeral. Not only did he just have a funeral, but he also put it on Zoom and put the link out for like anybody who wanted to see it. So the family was very, very upset about that. They fell up, they, they fell out after it and then they've never, they didn't go to the funeral and I don't think they fuck with him anymore. And like I said, it ain't never been like, oh, we love him to begin with. Now, apparently when Tracy died, now he said that Tracy had told him on his, her deathbed that she did want to have a funeral. Well, the family was just like, no, because she wasn't in her right mind. You know, she when you're on your deathbed and, you know, when you're dying from cancer and you're in pain and, you know, you're out of your mind and all that. So they didn't even think that, you know, they were just like, he was just talking, basically. Well, Tracy, honey, then when she passed, the husband thought that she had left him as the beneficiary or at least 50-50 because, you know, she had a son with him. But... Tracy ended up letting the son be 100% the beneficiary, left everything to the son, basically. So now the son has fallen out with the father, where the father is strained relationship with the son now because he thinks that, you know, they didn't pull the old one two on him. And I guess he thinks that the son should be giving him stuff. And I guess that son, like, I'm, mama didn't want to, if she wanted you to have it, she'd have left it to you. So now, now he turning around and saying that she wasn't in her right mind when she changed the will. Oh, so she was in her right mind when she said she wanted a funeral. But now you saying that she wasn't in her right mind when she changed the paperwork for this beneficiary. Okay. Now the lawyer who was representing Tracy said that she was in her right mind and that he actually video recorded it because he had a feeling like this, something like this was going to happen. Um, and it's just interesting. I'm just like, honey, Tracy was like, bitch, I'm gonna get the last laugh on this. Now, I don't know what went on, because like I said, I haven't watched their show. But, you know, Tracy and her husband, they've had issues, obviously, and she did not trust that after she died that he was gonna do right by her money, you know, that hard-earned money that she had and things that she, you know, that she felt like, maybe she felt like he was gonna go off with some other heifer and spend her money. Oh, no, you not. Okay, I'm gonna get this to my son who was re newly married and I think Tracy had just had a grandchild that wasn't that old, a couple of years at the oldest. Um, even though I don't think that the son is married any longer and the son has some legal problems and things too, but that don't even matter. She knew who she wanted, what she wanted, and she left that to who and what she wanted, which was her son. The husband is mad. The husband wants to be on the show. They were supposed to have a scene apparently with Tracy, you know, the Braxton's father and the step, I mean, um, Tracy's husband and her son. They was all supposed to have a scene together. But Tawanda and, and, and uh, Trina and them, they said that they shut that shit down. Tawanda was like, that nigga will never have a platform on this show. He cannot come on the show. Okay, so I guess they're seeing if maybe eventually the sisters are going to come around. I don't really see that happening. Um, and it's just going to be what it's going to be. All right, Tracy knew what she was doing, honey. And sometimes when you speak from the grave, you speak the loudest. Okay, so that's that. That's enough on the Braxton's child. All that happening still ain't enough for me to watch that show. <laughs> Okay, you guys, let's talk about the Dancing with the Star new season. Talk about a, a bunch of random people. I mean, Dancing with the Stars is always a bunch of random people. But this season, season seems really, really random. And it seems like people that we ain't, I mean, was we even really caring about these folks? Um, I just, I don't know the whole cast of all the new dancers, but I'm gonna just tell you who we who we do know. They say that your girl, your newest um, peach holder, Real Housewives of Atlanta star Phaedra Parks will be um, one of the Dancing with the Star contestants. Okay, did you see her with her 15 bags of blonde hair on? You know, now Phaedra body looks nice and everything, but Phaedra didn't did something to that face. And I don't know why she did, because Phaedra has like, she always has like a little cherub type face, but those kind of faces usually stay younger looking. When you have like bigger cheeks and fuller face, you look young already. So I don't know what she didn't did, but they was take, 
they was um she was in a video with Tori Spelling, who was also one of the contestants, and I was like, girl, what is what you done did? I hope you I hope that was just some Botox and you know, maybe the shit hadn't relaxed or something, because it was weird. It was weird. But yeah, she gonna be on there and that's gonna be interesting to see. And she gonna be dancing with um what's his name? Max. I think she's going to be his partner, so he's always good. Dwight Howard, which was surprising, considering Dwight Howard, you know, we've been talking about his lawsuit and, and, you know, that case and everything, so he ain't had the best publicity. I said, honey, whoever his manager was was like, honey, we're going to get you on Dancing with the Stars, you know. People still do like the, um, Dwight, like the other side, I'm saying, you know, these ones. I think they still like Dwight. So they're going to go on and give him a chance. What's going on with Dwight, though, y'all? Why he got this look? Like, he kind of was looking like uh, uh, like Lil Richard. Did y'all see when he was like, hey, everybody? Hey! His eyes all bucked out, and he was talking to, you know, y'all get up! Y'all get up! You got your bagels? You got your New York bagels? And, you know, he got that hair doing something. Child, just strange. He going to be... <laughs> <laughs> one of them. Child, we done got um uh, the original the Carl Winslow from Family Matters, um Reginald Vail Johnson. He's gonna be on there, child. We ain't even seen him in the month of Sundays. I didn't I I mean I didn't think he was dead, but we ain't seen him in a long, 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 long time. He gonna be one of the contestants. Yeah, it's a lot of people that's gonna be on there. I mean it all it is always random. It is always random, but I was just like, now how y'all where y'all dug old Carl Winslow up at? be rooting for everybody black okay i'm we gonna see out of that group maybe one of them will surprise us there's one other black girl i think she's from some reality show at first i thought it was um what's her name ananda lewis or something the one that used to be on um teen Sum was a teen summit child don't let me get the lion I don't give me these wrong words and stuff but it's a good group of black folks on there but all of them random how y'all think uh, Phaedra gonna do? I haven't seen her dance, but she looks like she's athletic. So, you know, she might be pretty light on her feet. Sometimes people that are athletic usually kind of, you know, do better. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, there. Who you guys rooting for? All right, you guys, that is it. Let me get on off of here. We do this every single week. So make sure you thumbs up the video, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you get back. <laughs> make sure you come back. <laughs>